Earlier this year, I did some speeches around the country and talked about the fact that we would judge the success of the Film Commission on the success of the industry, and that would be the marker that we would use. So I wasn't so interested in internal um, success ratios and things like that and various odd, strange things that government departments use. I was interested in how successful you were. And so what we did was we talked about uh, the concept of the five planets, uh, which I'd like to put up now for those of you that haven't seen them. And basically it's a metaphor that if you walked out in the middle of the night as a filmmaker and you looked up into the sky and these five planets were all shining equally brightly, then it would indeed be a very good time in our industry. And so basically that is how we do things. And I think it's pretty, I can talk them through very easily. Uh, we want pathways and careers for people, which is not the situation that would have probably existed 20 or 30 years ago. I don't think people thought that was possible. I think it's a, it's a, it's a fine aim today. Uh, we're very much bought into the government's aim of increased economic activity, which I think we will be seeing next year. Uh, we've made a big push and we're redefining rather than talking purely about box office numbers, we're talking about eyeballs on films here and overseas. We're talking about culturally significant films um, because that is a large reason why uh, as the New Zealand Film Commission we exist. And the thing that we're really pushing is this idea that we want films that blow your bloody socks off and really give, make something exciting and different. So they're the things that we want to do um, and that become part of how now, they've become part of our SOI, our statement of intent and how we measure ourselves. So today what I thought I'd do is I'd drill down a little bit into a couple of these areas and give you some more detail on some changes that we're instigating. And then at the end I might look forward to a couple of challenges. But briefly before I start, I do want to say one thing we don't have a problem with for the industry and that's overall government financial support. The amount of money that will be spent on the industry next year will I think surprise uh, even hardened veterans of, of this industry. A combination of our discretionary funds and the way the government incentives will work will almost certainly result in a huge level of production next year, more than we have seen for quite some time. But conversely that also means... <laughs> I, I do like a man who starts a clap. Thank you, <laughs> Mr Steve Barr. Um, but what it means also, maybe not clap at the end of this because this is something we really have to think about, is it now means we're under pressure to deliver to some extent to those people, to the government, and that means we have to deliver some great films, we have to deliver that economic growth that they're looking for, and we have to deliver those audiences. So how are we going to do that, and what are the challenges we face in delivering? So um, I talked earlier in the year about, in the various speeches, about a thing called Pathways to Feature Film Production, and I indicated that I wasn't particularly convinced that talented people were moving towards feature production as well or as successfully as they could. And that includes writers, directors and producers, that sort of above the line talent area. And what I mean by that is I don't mean that these people aren't talented. I think we have plenty of talent, including writers. But I had a very interesting discussion with Peter Jackson where he had done a little chart of looking at the, and he just chose directors, I guess, because he's a director, and he'd done a chart of the first 17 years of the Film Commission and the last 17 years of the Film Commission and he'd looked at the directors that had gone to have, on to have very successful international careers. Now it's a little difficult to decide how to define this but he just chose a particular measure of were they able to make films without Film Commission money, um, which I think is you know, a, a, not a bad way to do it. And what, what he found was that in the first 17 years of the Film Commission there were four times as many people in that list as there have been in the last 17 years. Now, okay, you know, some people are still works in progress in the last year or two, but I did think it was very interesting. It was something in the sense that we created a lot of very, very successful people then who, who've gone into this career thing that we're talking about, but we've been struggling a little bit in the last period to do the same sort of thing. So I, I think it's a little bit to do with the pathways and the, the way that people go into moving into those films and how we choose those people and how we make it, how we identify them and things like that. So I think that um, we've put a lot of effort into this at the Film Commission. We've created this department called the Talent and Development Relationships Department and I think some of you know about that and these are the people that work in that area now. And the phrase that they use there is to find, foster and connect outstanding New Zealand screen talent. So we're becoming a little bit more proactive 
than perhaps the Film Commission was in the past. But what we've also started to do is to think about what's the ecosystem that exists in this kind of pre-feature world? How do people move to become feature directors? Um, and we've developed this idea here, which again is, you're having, metaf you're having metaphor day today. Um, and I'm very conscious with metaphors that things can go terribly wrong with them. Uh, what we're talking about here is the sort of stepping stones across a river to feature film production and the sorts of things and activities that people are involved in that help. And I know that, you know, it, I'm, I'm picking that Keith Barclay will be doing some sort of lovely article about people who fall in the river and drown. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of conscious that, 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 that this is a, that we're on a slightly thin edge here. Um, but that's okay. So what I think happened in the past, and this came out a little bit when we did the consultation discussions uh, around the country, is that the previous thing to some degree was a sort of a thing called the Film Commission Ladder, where people went, you know, $10,000 short film, $30,000 short film, premiere thing, feature film. I think that we need to see this a lot wider and we need to see it with a lot less involvement of the Film Commission. So the black stones at the moment are things that the Film Commission is heavily involved in, puts most of the money in. The grey stones are somewhat devolved situations that we don't put, we might put a little bit of money in, but we essentially don't run, they are pretty much run on their own. And the white stones are things that have got absolutely nothing to do with the Film Commission whatsoever. And the key thing we want to talk about is that there are multiple pathways to the other side. And if you looked at the early careers of people like Toa Fraser, Peter Jackson, Gaylene Preston, Roger Donaldson, Robin Scholes, John Barnett, they would all have taken a different path. So certainly in the earlier days, um, I think that the pathways and the ways that people got to feature production was a little bit more varied, and this is something that we want to encourage. So we've made some changes to some of the stepping stones that we're involved in, um, while acknowledging all of the others. So one of the things we've done already, which I think has been already, I sense has been very successful, is we've introduced a thing called Hayata, which is a devolved fund for Māori and Pacifica filmmakers. This is a group here, this is the Picky group, um, who recently had a one-week workshop, and all indications coming out from that are uh, extremely positive. Um, we put $200,000 into the first round for three groups. We have applications, I think, that are coming in at the moment for another round of around $200,000 that we will announce in November. We can also announce today that we have finally concluded negotiations with three new business development scheme companies to join Libertine. So people will know that Libertine was um, announced last year and is operating. And we now have um, three new ones. Um, Matthew Metcalf's company, GFC Fighter Town. Uh, the Gibson Group in association with Catherine Fitzgerald's company, Blueskin, and Steve Barr. And a new um, company which has been formed by a grouping of people coming together called Field Theory, which includes the principals Philippa Campbell, Fiona Copland, and Tim Sanders. And along as consultants, they have with them uh, Chris Matson, Paula Jalfin, and Michael Eldred. So each of these companies is developing feature films, but each of them, I'm aware, in all cases, have people who are in that sort of early stepping stone thing, or people that are moving to make first, first feature films. So I see them as also part of this ecosystem. And of course, there are still companies like South Pacific Pictures who probably spend more money than everybody else uh, in all of these companies and probably the Film Commission in terms of script development and, and support of writers. Um, so I'll just go back and remind you about the stepping stone thing. So after a little bit of consultation uh, and then quite a lot of internal discussion at the Film Commission and then more recently some more consultation, um, I'm also announcing today there will be no more uh, premiere shorts. Uh, so that's six fewer short films that are currently budgeted at $90,000 each. And this decision, I think, might be contentious with a few people in spite of the consultation, but we do believe that this is the right decision. The Film Commission's been spending about a million dollars a year on short films, which is the same amount of money that it spends on uh, feature film development. And I think that probably that ratio is a little bit wrong. Um, so Premier Shorts is about 14 years old now and I think it was interesting in the consultation that there was an acceptance that there were a few creaky joints um, ar around things and that it was an interesting time to perhaps move on. 
So Fresh 10 and Fresh 30 um, are still in existence, and in fact on Friday we announced, I think it was 14 films, uh, 14 short films for that, and we have no intention of changing that. However, we now have half a million dollars that will be available in a new fund called Premier Pathways. Excuse me a moment. So this fund is intended to be a lot more flexible, uh, with the added aim of being a lot more focused on getting you to the other side of the river, rather than just to play in the river. Um, it is for moving image materials. That was an ad lib, that wasn't written on the script, I might add. <laughs> that's the sort of thing that's going to get me into trouble. <laughs> Short films do qualify for this, uh, but also so do proof of concept reels, uh, scenes from your feature script, or teaser trailers and we will be announcing some dates for applications shortly, but as opposed to Premier Shorts, which is once a year, this will probably be around four times a year, because one of the things that certainly came out in the consultation was uh, more regular. Um, to be honest, I would like to do it a little more than four times, but uh, it's surprising I have learnt uh, coming into the Film Commission environment that the mere process of, of collating applications and uh, going backwards and forwards with people before you can make a decision is a little bit more complicated than I probably in my naive um, mind thought. Uh, so uh, there's a small giggle there from Lisa, the head of production. Um, so what we think we'll do with this is we'll probably, it will be administered by the talent development uh, and relationships area rather than the production department, for, for partly for these reasons of, of administration, um, because development and production have got a, a huge workload at the moment. We'll probably make the decision of a group of three, which will be myself, one from production development and one from talent development. We have had some discussions and consultation with the industry about having outside uh, consultants, and we're not averse to that at all. We're quite interested in that, but it does tend to make the process a bit longer and a bit more complicated, and we're weighing up, you know, can we do one more round, or can we get things done quicker versus, you know, that impression that the industry quite likes, that there is, you know, some neutrality in the decision making. So if, if people have opinions about that, we're, we're still open to how we do it. Um, the key thing, though, is that people who apply will have to have a substantially developed feature film script. Hence the discussion about the playing in the river. You have to be heading towards the other side. That's probably at least a second draft script. It wouldn't have to be developed with us or through us or have any association with us. It can just be a second draft script or script at that sort of stage. Um, and it's very important that while you, it could be a short film, it could be the, a piece out of the script, it could be some sort of proof of concept thing, it has to in some way convince us that it is helping you get your film made. So I don't just want to say, I've got a script for a film and I'd like to make something over here. They have to be in some way connected so that again we're trying to help you get to the other side. Um, also, uh, to widen the net a little bit, what we're going to do is to do a little bit of work in association with the 48-hour film people and we're going to put a little bit of money into a more devolved thing for them, that's uh, for Ants and Tim, where people who, are, who sort of end up in the top half dozen or ten or five or three or whatever people feel who also have some sort of feature film project can have a separate amount of money to help them do something. And it could be a bit wider. It might be to take them on a trip somewhere to, to advance something. Those scripts probably don't need to be as advanced. But again, we're just trying to devolve and push out a little bit of money and to find some people in 48 hours that maybe we wouldn't find through Fresh 10 and Fresh 30. So just pushing it a little bit wider. So there'll be some money floating around there. Um, we're also going to increase the flexibility in the Fresh 10 and the Fresh 30s after consultation. There's a feeling sometimes that, you know, something probably should be made for 20,000 or it should be made for 40,000. Technically, it will still be 10 and 30,000, but occasionally there will be discretion for those budget ranges to be shifted for people uh, in deserving cases where that can happen. And don't forget there is still a finishing, short film finishing grants and things like that that are available. So the idea with this is that we will be trialling these to some degree, and if we see the industry a little bit more in this kind of ecosystem way, then our plan is literally sort of almost every year to push and pull a certain amount and go, well, that didn't work that well, let's take some of that money, this is working really well, let's push it over here. So expect a little bit of movement around the, the parameters and things like that, but also expect it to be within the ecosystem. 
Um, and just a reminder, we, we, one of the key things that hopefully is coming across that while I'm talking about what we're doing within the ecosystem, we're very, very conscious that we are just a part of it and people can travel right across the white stones and the grey stones perfectly happily or they can just jump right over to the other side as pretty much Toa Fraser did, I think. So there's lots of different ways to do it and sometimes it's a combination. I think Gerard Johnston, who looks like he's going to have a terrific career as a feature film director, certainly began well um, on running out of one of the, one of the um, uh, Escalator films, but really what's given his career a, a huge kickstart is that Peter Jackson rang somebody in the US and said, have you seen this film? This film is amazing. And sometimes it's as simple as that. It's a connection or, or some other way that someone's career gets advanced. It's not necessarily because of a bunch of people sitting in an office in Wellington. Um, it's worth just noting aside, I know a lot of people are interested in the Screen Advisory Board, um, which was announced some time ago and, and what's doing. And just talking of Peter and Fran, for example, I've had meetings with them. They are very interested in this area of new talent and they want to work with the industry and with people in, in, in that. Uh, I've met with John Landau and James Cameron, talked with them about what they want to do. They are extremely keen in helping us in the US and making connections into the US for us, in particular in Los Angeles. And um, Los Angeles next year will be a focus for the industry and we've already met uh, a couple of nights ago with all of the uh, actors, agents and casting directors to try to come up with ideas as to how we can improve access into the, into the US for our above the line acting talent. So um, hopefully also uh, Jane Campion um, wants to work in the area of gender equality uh, and we've been talking with her and I'm going to announce, just uh, give indications of what the numbers are there. But now I'd like to talk a little bit about feature film production. So you, I think people who know we are trying to do around about 8 to 12 features a year and diversity is a pretty key goal there. So we are looking for diversity of budget, genre, audience appeal, and again, one of the things that I say to the staff at the Film Commission is one of the ways that I would feel that we would be successful, particularly around this audience area, is that if I went to a party and it was a very diverse group of people of different ethnicities and ages, kids, older people, uh, different socioeconomic, whatever, and as I moved around the room, I constantly came across people who in the last 12 months had seen a New Zealand film that, that blew them away. So I don't just want it to be one New Zealand film, I want it to be a variety of films that appeal to, di to different people. So we talk about that quite a lot, and we talk about the fact that the role of um, the Talent and Development Department, uh, the uh, Development and Production Department, is really to see how they can assist you in making that range of films. We're still seeing some challenges around the question of raising the bar, which I've talked about quite a lot, and the, and the word rigour. Um, which people who have been dealing with us recently know is a big thing that we've been talking about, is just trying to introduce more rigour into the whole process at various stages. So particularly at the script stage, uh, late before the shoot, and particularly at the final cut stage. Um, we feel we're working um, reasonably well in this on the sort of main larger films and um, are reasonably happy about that. We've introduced some uh, uh, letters of interest which seem to be helping as opposed to uh, sometimes if a project's not quite ready for a commitment, we're giving people a letter of interest which enables them to continue working in the marketplace by saying the Film Commission are interested in this film, they are likely to invest in it, and that's a good flexible approach and makes things a little bit easier for people. Um, we've also, uh, I think, done a pretty good um, effort in the last 12 months of introducing a lot of the mainstream producers to a wider range of financiers and also to a wider range of sales agents uh, following the changes to the sales agent system. Um, we've also really pleasingly seen um, a growth in private finance. So there's quite a lot more private finance coming in. It's very rare now for someone to come in uh, for funding without some private investment attached to a film, which is something that definitely wasn't existing a couple of years ago. We've also got the very interesting experiment going on at the moment. Um, feel free to leave the room and pledge $100 to the patriarch. Uh, to help it get to its goal and get financed. Now that's probably quite an interesting indication of the change in the climate because that's a film that got a commitment from the Film Commission which is now two years old for its financing and to be honest it struggled a bit for a while and it's really only in the, in the last six months or so with a combination of a few factors um, and things that it looks like probably closing in the next month or so and going into production early next year which I think is a, a, a really great achievement for Robin Scholes if she manages to pull that off. 
So what we're, we're, we're reasonably happy with how things are going at that sort of production end and things, but what we'd like to do is, is be a little bit more proactive at the lower budget end, and people will know that Escalator finished around a year or two ago, and while it was contentious at the time uh, for a variety of reasons, and there are certainly some lessons to be learnt from it, it's generally accepted that the films that came out of it have been very, uh, you know, have by and large been very successful and have been really helpful in, in those people's careers. So what's been interesting for me though is that once Escalator sort of finished is that nobody came in the door at the Film Commission saying I'd like to make a low budget film. It was a bit like what had happened is if it's not a competition, you know, if it's not the block in film and television terms, uh, people don't seem to want to play, uh, which is kind of a little bit depressing. Uh, and I don't really think that we want to constantly spend our life running competitions for things if we could avoid it. So we're thinking that we're going to introduce um, more of, rather than a scheme or something with a name, we just really want to introduce another option at the lower budget area. So what we're doing now is we're going to invite filmmaking teams who've got lower budget screenplays, and, and we're giving that range is up to 500,000, so that's a little higher than it was for Escalator that are in an advanced stage of development and looking to move towards to production to apply at our normal board date. So next year we have six boards meetings, this year we had five, next year we'll have six. And we'd like to see three or four lower budget films a year being made in that sort of budget range and we'd like to assist them uh, into worldwide distribution and for New Zealand distribution. So the key driver of this initiative is to enable the production of more films and to increase the number of opportunities for filmmakers and performers. It's very important for me to stress, uh, particularly with guilds present in the room, that it is not designed to undermine existing paying conditions across the sector. Uh, it is intended to increase the overall health of the industry. So these films would need to be genuinely lower budget in scope and methodology to be viable candidates for funding. It's not about making a bigger budget film for less money or cutting corners at the expense of cast, crew and industry partners we would need a compelling proposal that shows how and why the budget is entirely realistic. Deferrals because of low pay would be discouraged. We're looking for distinctive projects with strong scripts and audience prospects from exciting teams. So the aims are to increase the number of films, to increase the development opportunities for the next generation of talent in front of and behind the camera, to increase the quality of low budget films, and to build relationships for filmmakers in that last one is quite important. We don't see this as something that just operates as a sort of little isolated thing where people are making a low budget film on their own. Things you might need to know if you're thinking that this could be you, there are no genre restrictions. All feature length films, whether documentary or drama, uh, will be eligible. Strong audience appeal will be a crucial factor. International market attachment will be a significant part of the financing, which the NZFC will assist with when not available which realistically for most emerging filmmakers is pretty much all the time. So what we've done to try to help this is we've entered into two sort of overarching relationships with um, offshore sales operations who are significant players and in one case have significant cash. And essentially what will happen is if the project comes in and we like it, then what will happen is you'll either get, well, pretty, pretty simply you'll get a no or a maybe. So if you get a no, you know, that's that. If you get a maybe, what we will do is we will broker your engagement with one or two or both of these offshore entities and we will assist in the way that that happens. Um, and effectively, without going into a lot of detail, whatever they put up, we will match. So if you come in and say, I have a $500,000 film and I think, you know, I've done the budgets and it's 500,000 and we introduce you to these people and they say, you know what? it's probably in the marketplace a $400,000 film and we'll put up 200 grand, then we'll put up 200 grand and the market will have an opinion that the film is a $400,000 film. Conversely, you might have to become involved as a producer in a discussion with those people saying, well, I really need 500. And then they might say, well, we can't sell it at 500 like that, but if you attached so-and-so as an actor for 50,000, we might be able to. And then, you know, you become, what we're really trying to do is encourage uh, the filmmaking teams at an early stage, and that's the writers and the directors as well as the producers, to have some market uh, involvement and not to constantly be, at the Film Commission, the only person with, the, with opinions. So we want to introduce uh, newer and younger filmmakers into the marketplace while recognising that they're not 
financed and cashed up enough to be able to travel three times a year to markets and to have this wide range of contacts. So that's, the, that's essentially the, the way it would work. Uh, you wouldn't have to have a New Zealand distributor, but we would want to know what the market plan was or what the thoughts were and why the film would work, and we would probably also work with you to attach someone or for you to enter into some arrangement that meant that you had a strong audience connection. Um, if, you've, if you were heading towards the finish line and it was looking good, we would attach an exec producer to the project. But the good news for those people that have been through these projects with exec producers is that we would pay for the exec producer, so we wouldn't get that horrible, annoying thing that I know happens to younger filmmakers where they're working 5,000 hours for, for a $30,000 fee and they know that the exec producer is getting $20,000 and then he's only working so much. So they won't, you won't need to worry about that. That would fall outside your budget. We would pay for that. Um, so what would you need? Well, you'd need a great script, which of course is probably the first hurdle, um, and that's a, a critical one. So I think Escalator was done more off the uh, treatment kind of thing. We're not so interested in that. We want to actually see the script. Uh, we want an overview about an understanding of why you think people would give you money, uh, rather than just that you deserve it. So you'd need, we want some thought given to why someone offshore would put money in, why we would put money in. Uh, we'd want a big sense of the audience and who you thought the audience was and what the genre was. Uh, we'd want visual materials that might support it. And we'd want a budget and a methodology that matched. And I, I'm being really clear here where I want to say we do not want to see million dollar films coming in at half a million dollars. We want to see smart films that are being made for the money. And we had one recently that came in at a million dollars and it was shot, it was set in a room. And we said, you know what, you could make this picture for half a million dollars because it's set in a room. And if you made it for half a million, it was quite a niche picture and quite unusual. And if it was made for half a million dollars, it would have been a really good idea. It was a small cast in a small room. And unfortunately, those people now, I think what they want to do probably is they want to open the picture up. They want to make it bigger and more interesting and shoot more outside. And I'm not sure that, that for that particular picture that that's entirely the right thing to do because I think that the audience appeal of that picture is inherently limited but at a low price, it's probably quite good. Um, what we've got, it does raise the question of what happens between half a million and a million. So we've come up with um, a little interesting phrase here because what we have been seeing is films come in just under the million dollars under the old regime because you don't have to have a market attachment. And so things are just coming in at 985,000. So this is the new system. I'm apparently running out of time, so I'm going to sort of speed along quite quickly now. Um, I think this should be reasonably clear. Um, if you're asking for $100,000, it'd be nice to know that someone would see it, but you don't need to have strong commitments. If you're asking for $2 million and telling us it's a very commercial project, then we expect you to have strong commercial attachments. Um, continuing the audience thing, uh, you'll notice um, that this year the Dot Connect replaced the uh, joint documentary fund, so we can announce that we have three projects that have been funded under this, three feature documentaries. These met the criteria of in themselves being a compelling, interesting film and having an audience connection plan and ideally an attachment, which I have to say most of the projects that applied did not. So someone, a lot of the people didn't see the word connect uh, in the title of the scheme. Um, We've also been dealing a lot more now with the local distributors. Uh, we had, I think, for the first time a meeting with all of the local distributors, and we've been engaged in some terms of trade discussion with them in terms of the way the subsidies and things operate. So uh, if you want to go on the website today, we have four, whoops, I've just gone, sorry, we've, I was gonna talk briefly about the marketing department because I run out of time. That's the marketing department. They're really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> This is where the money is. Uh, it's on the website. Uh, so this is really for established New Zealand distributors. Um, these things are reasonably self-explanatory. The P&A grant is similar. Uh, there is now a VPF grant for, uh, to get around the, the problems of VPF. We've created an innovation grant where uh, we're encouraging distributors and people to, we're prepared to fund up to 90% of a smaller amount of money for something very, very in innovative, a little bit like um, everything we loved was done as a day and date. VOD and film festival release and we contributed substantially to that because we were interested to see what would happen if we did a release like that uh, and so that that was very good 
and the box office statistics one is a version of subsidising the rent track numbers for distributors on the basis that we can access that information ourselves. Um, <coughs> I'm going to have to cut a couple of pieces, but that's all right. There will be a version of this on the website. Uh, I, think it, I think it's up now, actually. Um, it's probably worth mentioning while we're talking about the, uh, the rent track system that we now have a, a strategy and an insights advisor, Selena Jo, who's working three days a week with us and two days with New Zealand On Air. And she's working very closely with the market department on her main research project, which is who is watching New Zealand films and where. And so next year we expect to be able to provide you with a lot of audience market research reports. And these will help with the very things we're trying to do, which is identify our audiences, build them, and connect with them, and, and, and have a lot more knowledge about how we go there. She's also incidentally um, up on the website today um, as the results of some work that she did. And this is the lovely thing about having someone like Selena. This was quite quick for us to do uh, some gender. Uh, information around um, applicants as writers, directors and producers and I don't think anyone will be particularly surprised by the results of that. Um, we have indicated already to WIFT and I'd like to extend that invitation to the Writers Guild and to the Directors and Editors Guild that we would like to consult with them about ways that we think that it is possible to address this issue. Um, I would stress we'd like to work ideally with the guilds and not with just everybody individually, so if people have thoughts on, on that topic, please come back through those guilds. Um, I did think it would be quite nice. Uh, we have, um, as people know, a thing called Te Ahika, where a lot of the films that were in the sales agents have gone into uh, this new area called Te Ahika, and as part of that, shortly, we will be announcing, uh, I think, about 41 films to be placed with a worldwide, uh, very strong and internationally recognised sales agent for television sales uh, of the back catalogue. Uh, also this year, we reached out to Lotto, which was uh, an initiative we did, and uh, we want to do a lot more with them. We did a couple of little things. They were involved in the promotion for Dark Horse and currently for Hip Operation. And as part of that, Tom Hearn and I we were invited down to Gisborne where Dark Horse was shot and we did a little uh, ceremony here with the uh, Lotto retailers and with the board and you can see that, um, I'll just show you another slide, you can, <laughs> you can see that uh, Lotto liked Tom Hearn a lot. Uh, he did leave with me on the plane the next day. Um, but we had a lot of fun, and they had a lot of fun, and I think that that relationship um, is potentially very strong, and we're going to work on some stuff with them. <laughs> we will sell you. <laughs> we will sell your souls. Um, I'd also like to announce next year we will be having, uh, we're going to create a lo some local distribution, um, long-term sort of seminars, which will run over several months, where people with films in sort of mid-development uh, teams of them will work over a number of weekends on a curriculum that covers the entire gamut of local production, of local distribution, from, which will include buying time on television, PR campaigns, splits with the cinemas and everything. And I've encouraged John Barnett uh, to mentor and to, to run this as, a, as an overall person, uh, which I'm really excited about because John has had the most success uh, of any producer um, in the, at the local box office, and I think he will be a terrific person to do this. If this works, it will become something that we will just do every year. So anyone who's moving into the industry and becoming involved in developing a script will know automatically that they can do that. And I was going to tell you all about the challenges that we were going to face together, but I don't have time. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sorry, uh, my timing is obviously really out. And this is the guy that tried to get the dark horse shorter. So, you know, um, there are problems there. So, uh, um, so, basically, there's a little bit of material that's on the website around uh, some of the things. I was going to give the producers a bit of a rack up, so it's a pity I don't have time, um, about some of the issues that I saw. Uh, and that's... Oh, you'd like to see the producers get a rack up? About five minutes. About five minutes. Yeah. Five? Five? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, I, I'm basically, the sense of rigor is, is relevant to this conversation. But one of the things that um, I think that 
we, we waste a little bit of time on projects that aren't kind of worthwhile, and a lot of it is all to do with craft and things. So we've been introducing that and looking at, at, at the moment when people decide whether you know, it comes in at EDF and things like that, is it really a project that we want to do? But the other thing I did want to talk about a little bit is I do think that there's a, a, a bit of an issue around producing at the moment. I think that some of our producers could be a little hungrier and they could have a little more drive and they could have a little more rigour and they could have a little bit more of how can we make this film really, really good? How can we just go that extra mile? How can we do this? And I think there are, a f it's, it's a little bit like the 80-20 thing. We have a few really terrific, energetic, driven producers with strong slates who are connected with creators, crews, and the marketplace. And correspondingly, I think we have producers who do not exhibit the wide range of skills that you require today across script development, financing, physical production, and the marketplace. And consequently, what we're seeing is we're seeing productions come in with several producers or executive producers attached, all of them with fees, in an attempt to plug holes. And ironically, what happens sometimes is they attach producers who don't plug the holes that are glaringly obvious to us, but actually just add to the fees. And so this is something that I think that the industry really needs to address. And so what I was trying to do in the bits that are missing is kind of throw things back to you guys a little bit as to what you could do about some things. And I think, you know, one of the things we've been thinking about is should we be inflammatory? Should we put some sort of cap on producer fees, you know, and just say, okay, well, you can't have five producers all with a whole lot of money, you know, the, you know, or if you have got five producers, maybe there's a limit to what, you know, why do we need five people to do this? So that's something. Um, and I think that conversely, I think that people going to producers, writers and directors, should think more seriously about the producers that they approach and the, who they take projects to. Are they actually real producers who get things made or people who just spend a lot of nice time with them in coffee shops bemoaning the funding system? You know, um, so I think that, that that's an important issue that I'd like to raise, um, and I'd like to, to put a bit of pressure back on the producers. Um, I also think there's a couple of issues around training. I think that next year is going to be really, really busy. We're going to have real resource issues, potentially. Um, we're going to have crew issues. We're going to have infrastructure issues, and I think people are going to have to start thinking about how to do that, and I think the guilds should be really thinking that through. I think we're probably lucky that we have got flexible immigration in this country because I think we're going to need it. And I think you're going to probably need to encourage people that you know to come back and work in the business. I also think next year we'd like to start thinking about the training courses that are being offered. Um, there are some opinions that we have probably too many entry level training courses and not enough mid level. And I think that would be a major area that we want to look at as well. But very quickly, to sum up, if we go back to the five planets in the sky, I'm pretty optimistic about the increased economic activity, as you can see. I think if that happens, we're going to start seeing good careers for people. Uh, I think we're putting in place a lot of things around distribution uh, and things that we're doing there that if the films are good, we will get the eyeballs on the films. But I do think the big issue for us as an industry is we can only fund the films that come in the door. So at the moment, I have to say, I'm still not seeing and we're still not seeing the quality and the diversity of the projects coming in the door that we want to fund. Uh, and I think that's really, really important. So please, uh, we're trying really hard at the Film Commission to be a flexible, responsive, helpful agency. We talk a lot about trying to be flexible with people, trying to be responsive, trying to be helpful, not to be bureaucratic. But please, you have to bring us some really, really exciting projects in the next six months. Thank you very much. Thank you.